What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden and today we are going to be going over 15 of, in my opinion, cool JDM cars that you can find under $5,000. Um, JDM cars are really, really wanted nowadays. And so if you do plan on getting one of these, just know that it might have higher miles. It might have a couple problems that you'll have to fix, but you should be able to find one that is relatively worth the money for under five thousand dollars anyway guys let's get right into the video if you want to support the channel any more than you already are head on over to www.smoothstance.com shop you can pick yourself up a hat i was waiting for me to get to that point shirt or shorts and with that out of the way guys let's get into the video all right so number 15 is the nissan sentra ser spec v it's the b15 sentra but i'm pretty sure they only made one ser spec v uh, and the car comes with a 2.5 liter inline four that makes 175 horsepower and it was front wheel drive now here's the deal these sentras they went through this weird patch right they they came out and they were pretty cool people were like that that's a pretty cool car they're making like a sedan into something cool and we haven't seen that really before and they liked it and they were happy about it and then around the time that like drifting became popular these cars fell off the map and nobody wanted them they were like kind of a laughing stock to be honest like people were joking about the Sentra. people did not like the Sentra, and now they're finally becoming cool again in my personal opinion they've always been cool they're sick cars they're little tiny they're not gonna be you know you're not gonna turn a Sentra into like a freaking the hellcat gap and machine right but you can have a good amount of fun with this car and for only under five thousand dollars that's awesome and it's really unique nobody modifies these things Numero 14 is the Toyota Cressida. I'm only doing this one because somebody in the last video said that they need to see more Cressida videos in my list. And so here it is. Uh, the car comes with a three liter inline six that makes 190 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. And these cars are just absolute drift missiles. Everything about this car just screams, hey buddy, I want to be drifted. Everything. I mean, it's just a, honestly, on the outside, it's a boring old sedan. Doesn't have anything special going for it on the outside. On the inside, it's got a decent motor, but nothing crazy. It's just a car that's rear wheel drive built by Toyota that's dirt cheap. And that's all it's ever going to be. And it's awesome because you could just swing this thing. In my opinion, the Cressida is like the Japanese Volvo 240. You know what I mean? Like they're just beater cars that you can drift and have a blast with. They are kind of rising in prices because everything is that gets you drifted, but they're still under five thousand dollars i'd recommend picking one up really soon though because i can see these cars easily becoming like the next s13 and just absolutely going ridiculous mode on the prices but hopefully that doesn't happen because they're pretty cool cars and i want one number 13 is the mitsubishi 3000 gt another very underrated uh jdm car a lot of the underrated jdm cars are going to be found under 5k which is good news for you and me uh, the car comes with a three liter v6 that makes 161 horsepower and it was front wheel drive now if you can manage to find to find a vr4 model it's going to be all wheel drive is going to make 320 horsepower and have a turbocharger on that puppy and so i highly recommend that like if you can find one of those go for that one but chances are you probably won't they're pretty rare uh but the base model 3000 gt is still pretty cool i mean it's yes it is front wheel drive which does take away from how like cool the car actually is but it's just it's a little you know it, it's a it's a looker it's a looker that's the best way to put it. it it looks cool it looks fun it also they handle very well the 3000 gt is a very well handling car this was back when mitsubishi was actually making very cool cars <laughs> and sadly they stopped but the 3000 gt was one of their final like pushes of hello we're a cool car brand and people just sleep on it Number 12 is the Nissan 300ZX Z31. The Z32 you may be able to find under 5k still, but it's definitely going to have some problems. Uh, but this one comes with a 3 liter V6 that makes 222 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. But don't think that you're going to be drifting these things because they're, they don't make for the greatest drift cars due to weird weight distribution, not the best uh, rear end in terms of you know differential for people that don't know what that means uh, but it's just not like it's just not the best drift car these cars are more like and they're also not like the best you know car to build into like a street car either these cars are more just kind of like a car that you have to really like to actually buy it if that makes any sense like you have to you know be a z31 fan to actually buy the z31 and me personally i am a z31 fan so that's why i put it on the list uh working on the engine bay is gonna suck they cram motors into every z car it's just ridiculous how tight they make those engine bays but besides all that stuff it's a really cool car it's got two seats it's a blast it looks retro as hell i love it number 11 is the honda accord cb7 
This freaking thing is so underrated, man. All the cords are pretty damn underrated, but this one especially, they're so cool. And I just don't understand why I mean, nobody talks about them. But they come with a 2.2 liter inline four that makes 140 horsepower and it was front wheel drive. Now I cannot tell you like confidently that if that motor is a good motor to build or not, but if there's one thing I know, it's that Honda makes some pretty damn good tuning motors. So most likely 90, I'm like 90, like a, like 92.3% positive that this motor will be good for tuning. And if it isn't, well, it's a Honda, so you can slap anything in it. K series, go for it. B series, go for it. Uh, freaking even an F, I don't, do they make F motors? I don't know, but just swap a motor into it from another Honda and you're golden. They also look just baller as hell when actually modified in stock. They're like boring. I love cars that are like that, like stock, they're boring cars. And then like when you actually start to modify them, it's like, whoa, what do you got there, buddy? And that's exactly what this Accord CB7 is. Don't sleep on these cars, man. They're freaking sick. Go show, you know, show some love to the Accords. Number 10 is the Mazda RX-7 FC, the second generation Mazda RX-7. It comes with a 1.2 liter two rotor rotary engine that makes 160 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. Now, before you start commenting, Mark, you're wrong. That car makes 180 horsepower and it's got a 1.3 liter. That is the turbo model that you're thinking of, buddy, and you are not going to be able to find a turbo RX-7 FC under $5,000. But the base model is still super cool. And honestly, most people don't keep the rotaries in them anyway, so I don't really know if that's really that you know, you don't really need to spend that money on it, but they're sick little cars. A lot of people use these cars for drift cars, a lot of people. And so you could absolutely can do that. But where I think these RX-7 shine is track cars. They've always been built to be track cars. Like, I don't understand why people don't, you know, build them to take laps better and stuff like that. So if you are going to buy an FC RX-7, you know, change it up on them a little bit, man. Turn it into a track monster. I want to see that more. Uh, they're sick little cars. One thing I really like about them, they have freaking pop-up headlights yes they do have a rotary so you know you're gonna be a little bit more unreliable than usual but it's gonna be well worth it because you're gonna look like a baller number nine is the subaru wrx bug eye yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh easily the most underrated subaru wrx out there and they are literally exactly the same as the blob eye and hawkeye they're the same car all right like there's pretty much nothing different about them they both all come with a two liter turbocharged flat four that makes 225 horsepower and they are all all wheel drive obviously the only difference about the bug eye blob eye and hawkeye is the way the body looks in the front and the back end a tad bit so if you can get over the looks which yes i will admit that the bug eye is probably my least favorite wrx generation in terms of looks if you could get over those looks though you have yourself a hawkeye wrx for under five thousand dollars like i don't understand why they don't do that more uh these cars can do literally just about anything too except for drifting but they can even do that i mean my friend eric he has a wrx and he welded the center diff and he drifts that thing and it's freaking awesome so even if you wanted to drift this thing you could do that but they make great track cars they're obviously great rally cars they are good street builds because they have an ej in them and you can build those things if you don't care about head gaskets it's just it's just checks off all the boxes there's no wonder that everybody buys these WRXs. Get one while you still can. Number eight is the Toyota MR2 SW20. We have been talking about this car a lot these past couple of days, and it just keeps showing up because it's a cool little car, man, and I love it. Uh, it comes with a two liter inline four that makes 163 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive, and it was mid engined. Yes, it did have a very hard learning curve when driving this car because of something called snap oversteer, but that's okay. You wanna know why that's okay? Because you're gonna be mature. All right, if you're going to buy one of these cars, you got to make me a promise. And that is that you're going to take it seriously. You're going to learn the car before you start, you know, ripping on this thing because these cars like to have snap over steer. And I do not want to hear, hey, Mark, love your videos, but now I'm paralyzed because I wrapped my MR2 around a tree. I don't want to hear that. All right. So please just be safe if you do pick up an MR2 SW20. If you do, though, you got yourself a sick little car, man. It has pop-up headlights. It's tiny. has two seats. It's mid-engine, which is freaking sick. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And it can be an ultimate track monster if you can manage to deal with the snap oversteer. And it actually isn't too difficult to deal with it. People overhype it a lot. People say that it's like the most hard car in the world to drive. It isn't that bad. You just have to learn to not let off the gas when taking corners. And you'll be all right. Number seven is the Toyota Supra Mark III. Mark is my name, by the way, but there's, oh my God, I actually am the third. My dad's name is Mark and my grandpa's name is Mark. So that's me. I am, I'm this car. It comes with a three liter inline six that makes 200 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. In a recent video, I said that these cars came with a 2JZ. I was wrong. They come with a 7M GTE, which is still an okay motor. Nothing, you know, super insane. It's still pretty good though. Uh, it's, it's a Toyota motor, you know, it's going to be a Toyota motor from the nineties. They all, they all did the same thing. But if you live overseas, you can get one of these things with a 1J in them that has turbo in it. If you do that, 
well, you got yourself a freaking little, you got yourself a little rock star. You know what I mean? You got yourself a little, I just realized, by the way, I'm going to get flamed again. So I got to correct myself. I just realized I said 7M GTE. It comes with the 7M GE. There is a 7M GTE and that one comes with the turbo in the States, but we don't, it's such a confusing, supers are so freaking confusing. They come with so many different cars. You never, you know, they just chaser. Chaser is another one that has too many different engine options, but the Mark III super is cool. It's all you got to know. It has pop-up headlights, looks sick, super long. It's a very big car. A lot of people don't drift them, uh, but they're cool cars. Pick one up. Number six is the Mazda Miata NB. The NB stands for New Balances, and it comes with a 1.8 liter inline four that makes 135 horsepower, and it was rear-wheel drive. And this is honestly, I want to say it, man. I'm going to say it. this is tied for my favorite generation of Miata out there. All right. I'm sorry. Like the NA Miata is super cool. Don't get me wrong. And they can look super awesome, but I've seen way too many riced out NAs lately. And I think they kind of tainted my image on, on them. And the NBs just like always look good. They just look so cool. The NB Miata just took what the NA Miata did and just did it better in every way, except for they took away the pop-up headlights. That's it. That's the only bad thing that the NB Miata did. The body lines are sick on it. It looks beautiful. Stands or tracked or freaking even rally you can do anything with a miata i'm sure you all know by now that miatas are just like whatever you want to do to them they, they can do it but the miata nb is just so underrated like it gets obviously overshadowed by its little brother or older brother i guess the na and don't sleep on it man because this is literally just a better na and they're cheaper than the na's that's why i put it on this list yes you can find an na under 5k but everybody says that so buy an nb Number five is the Honda Civic S-I-E-K. The S-I stands for Sports Illustrated and the E-K stands for Erotic Kangaroo. It comes with a 1.6 liter inline four that makes 160 horsepower and it was front wheel drive. And yes, you may be thinking to yourself, why did this guy just put a 160 horsepower little front wheel drive Civic that's naturally aspirated at number five? And the reason why is because A, it looks awesome. All right, I'm just gonna put it out there. But B, the bigger reason is because it's a freaking Civic, man. These Civics are just tuning monsters. Do whatever you want to them and they're just gonna be awesome. You can, they are one of the best, if not the best budget tuner, build out there you can turn this thing into a street missile for less than you can buy the car for less than 5k and then turn it into a missile for under 5k too it's easily one of the best bang for your buck options out there yes you are gonna have to modify these to really have you know the true potential of them but once you do man you're gonna realize how easy it is to work on how cheap it is to do how fun it is and the differences that it makes because of how light the car is it's just all so well worth it Number four is the Lexus LS 400. This car is getting a lot of hype right now, and it honestly kind of deserves it, in my opinion. The car comes with a four liter V8 that makes 270 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive. That is actually going to be the second highest horsepower number on this list. It's a very, very big big boy machine and it's the only car that's going to be a v8 on this list and it's rear wheel drive so you may be asking yourself well mark them why isn't it in first place that's because it didn't come with a manual option now here's the deal i know you lexus boys are going to comment down below well that's because luxury cars don't need a manual i get that but i like manuals okay and they sure it doesn't need it but i want it all right it's sick now the one uz that comes in these cars is the same that comes in the sc400 and they're such so unbelievably underrated the engine the you, the one uz is incredibly underrated i don't understand it's probably the most slept on engine ever these engines can get so much power out of them they're a freaking v8 they're reliable as hell i'm sure you guys have all heard about the million mile lexus yeah well it was achieved in an ls 400 all right so this car is just checks off all the cool boxes except it doesn't have a freaking manual third place is another lexus the lexus is 300 is freaking sick i love it i want one so bad they come with a three liter inline six that makes 225 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive now this one i can confidently say was a 2jz but it was not the 2jz gte that's found in the toyota supras it's the 2jz ge because it doesn't have the turbo and since it doesn't have the turbo it also doesn't have the forged internals that the supras do, the uh the gtes do and so it isn't as great for building power but it still is a freaking missile a lot of people are starting to realize finally that the ge 2j's are still worth the money and you can still build like 600 horsepower out of these cars without touching the motor and that's freaking insane uh they also look incredibly good they have four doors you can carry all your homies around i will say it's probably going to be pretty damn hard for you to find a manual one under 5k but like i said before with the ls 400 everything else kind of outweighs that so it, it does earn the spot and the reason why i put this one one spot higher than the ls 400 is one i like the looks better two it's a little bit lighter three it has a shorter wheelbase everything about it is more sporty than the ls 400 so i think it deserves a spot
Second place is the Infinity G35 Coupe. You knew it was coming. I have a 350Z. I love in the whole VQ family. I'm a big member of them. I know we sound like trumpets. I get it. It doesn't. We don't like it either, but it's all right. It comes with a 3.5 liter V6 that makes 306 horsepower, and it was rear-wheel drive. Now, that's in the HR models, but you actually can find G35 Coupes that are HR powered under $5,000. It is possible, so don't, don't, don't hate on me here. Probably not a manual one, though. But even if you can't find an HR, you can easily find a D which still has 287 horsepower and is still definitely deserving of the number two spot these motors aren't the best for building power you can make pretty decent power out of them but nothing crazy you're not going to be like wowed by the amount of potential that a vq does have but it just kind of checks off all the other spots it's comfortable as hell kind of like the ls 400 is way more modern and you know sleek looking in my opinion than most of the cars on this list it is rear wheel drive has a more sporty look to it than the ls 400 it's just everything about it is yes it is a luxury car but it's a luxury sports car and i think it was worth it it's freaking awesome but in my opinion the best jdm car that you can find for under five thousand dollars has to go to the acura rsx type s this car comes with a two liter inline four that makes 201 horsepower <laughs> very funny that they did i don't know why they didn't just like take that horsepower out to give it an even 200 but they didn't uh and it was front wheel drive obviously because it's a freaking acura it's honda they all do the same thing now the type s has a freaking k series motor in it you can build these things up to be absolute beasts right out of the gate they're under five thousand dollars they're probably my favorite honda ever built in terms of looks i love the looks of the type s rsx and everybody always talks about the type r integra and how legendary that was well the rsx kind of only did it better okay if you look at the history of it the next generation honda integra aka the acura rsx to us type r did better than the freaking integra at type r from the last generation so it's just a better car and you could yes the type s isn't as good as the type r obviously but it's pretty damn close man you're not that far off and since like i said before it's a honda parts are cheap work is easy it's reliable as shit you could make this car just as fast as a type r with only, only like two thousand dollars they're freaking absolutely wonderful if you ever watch a like gears and gasoline video or something like that you'll see tons of rsx time attack cars because they're just great handling cars sure you can't drift in it that's the only thing i would say is bad about it but i mean i kind of think it's special that it's a honda and you know their front wheel drive that's like kind of their signature at this point but ladies and gentlemen that is going to be the end of today's video i hope you enjoyed if you did be sure to like comment and subscribe let me know what other videos that you guys would like to see down below also i'm going to link in the top of the description a link to my new channel i started a new channel for grand theft auto online i know it sounds weird but i play it a lot and I figured, well, I'm just sitting here playing this game, wasting my time away. Why not make videos about it, show other people, tr maybe try and get a big another following on that? Because I like I, I like this stuff, man. I like seeing, you know, people and the communities being built. It's cool to me. I just like it. And so I decided I'm going to try to do it again. It doesn't take that much work. So it's not like I'm, you know, sitting here like, oh, God, I'm working all day. It's not like that. You know what I mean? I'm just having fun playing the game. So if you enjoy GTA Online and you want to go see GTA Online footage or stuff, obviously, relating to cars or honestly anything that you want to see go check it out because i'm going to be doing that a lot over there uh it's going to be fun hopefully hopefully it's going to be great and hopefully i can build another community just like this one on that channel that would be awesome too to have two little separate communities and stuff like that but i do want to say with that being said no matter how big i get on any other platform tiktok instagram another youtube channel i will never forget about you guys you guys care i care the most about you guys hands down easily you guys are super nice to me you guys have never done nothing but support me all this whole time i just i just i appreciate it i i know a lot of you guys on like a almost like a first name basis at this point you guys talk to me like we're friends and i really like that so don't think that just because i'm starting a new channel i'm gonna stop paying attention to you guys more that's not the case as a matter of fact if that channel does blow up and i can start making money off that channel all i'm gonna do with that money is use it to better this channel and get more projects or better footage i'm still recording on my gopro so just go check it out if you like GTA Online. Thank you guys so much for watching. Das Vidania. Have a nice night.